Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new week of the Grand Slam and uh, what turns out to be a new beginning in the career of Dave Plays. After two seasons at Dunkirk, one of the worst teams in the French League, we finished on 70 points in our second season in charge, having built a team who I believe are capable of promotion next season. However, the fans... The, the, the viewers have spoken and uh, the choice was given to you guys and the choice has been made and the choice is that we move on after a uh, an offer from Brentford. We are moving on and we are coming back home to English football and to the championship. So let's go into the management career section into manager offers and uh, we'll have a look at Brentford. So you can see there that they are in the Skybet Championship this upcoming season. It's uh, it's going to be a difficult league to get out of. There's going to be a lot of games to play. Of course, the uh, the league, the Championship, is a 24-team league. It's recognised as one of the hardest leagues to win promotion from, and it is full of absolute quality sides. And uh, you could see any of seven or eight teams winning promotion um of course it's with a heavy heart that we leave dunkirk a team that we built up let's actually go back and have a little look at the uh, at the squad so of course danny martin a goalkeeper that we brought in uh, to replace Maraval, a player who's still with us, but you look at the quality difference and having a player of Martin's uh, quality between the sticks uh, really does make a huge difference. The, uh, the centre-back pairing of Alberto and Vimmer really gave us something uh, of a defensive shield for the goalkeeper. Uh, Maslov coming in at right back, a, uh, a centre back by trade, but played very well as a right back, all things considered. And uh, Teixeira, a player who uh, came from the youth team, we're familiar with Teixeira, we've seen him before. Didn't really kick on development wise, but definitely gave us something down the left hand side. Weighed in with a couple of goals as well. Uh, Okachukwu, uh, absolutely amazing. Hit the ground running when we brought him in. I was very, very happy with his performance over the last season. Also very happy with the performance of Wouter Berger, a, a player that I'm familiar with from playing football manager, a Dutch midfielder, fairly tall in stature, but a little bit too easy to knock off the ball at times. Uh, Wes Harrington, another player who uh, came up from the youth team and developed quite nicely, really gave us a lot of uh, threat from the central midfield area. It was really between him and Sahin for that attacking midfielder role, with Sahin having been uh, supplanted by Valbuena on the right-hand side of the front three. Sanun getting game time on the left, but really Mario Gonzalez was the player that was heir apparent in that position. I would expect him to get a lot of game time next season. And although Grot is named as the starting centre forward, I think we can all agree Troy Parrott was an absolute beast for us. If we have a look at the, uh, the team stats, which I think should be in team info. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's manager office. Database, maybe. Do you know, I've established that I don't know my way around this menu system at all. I think that's probably what we can uh, infer from this. So I believe if we go into team info and then go into League Dirt and then find Dunkirk, uh, we can probably have a look at the player records there we are so uh, the lead goal scorer this season with 15 goals was grot however if we go down you can see troy parrot 12 goals with uh, a great many less appearances seven less appearances 12 goals 6.5 rating with two assists to his name grot with five not a bad return from troy parrot so uh, pretty pretty decent performance from troy parrot this season and i'll be honest I'm thinking about bringing one or two players with me when I get to Brentford. And I think Troy Parrott might be one of the names on the list. Let's just uh, go back into the game plan. Sorry, negotiations very quickly. Because I want to have a look at these players' uh, negotiations. Uh, as far as uh, market value and potential uh, release fees on some of these players. So Troy Parrott, for example, does have a release fee of £4.5 million And... He's in the last couple of years of his contract. So I think potentially that's a player only on £3,150 a week. 
definitely a player that I could see making the move. Um, Wouter Berger has got a very low release clause on him and will develop quite handsomely. So will Harrington, although his release fee is definitely higher. And uh, who else should we look at? Grot, potentially. He would be a good foil for the likes of... Uh, uh, I can't... Ivan Tony. There we go. I'm going to remember these names a lot more easily as I move through. There's a lot of players in this team that I wouldn't mind bringing with me. I guess we'll have to have a look at the Brentford squad and see uh, what the weaknesses in that squad are, where we need to strengthen. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see a couple of familiar names coming through. Now, as I keep threatening to do, we're going to go into management career. We're going to go to manager offers and we are going to obey the poll and uh, select Brentford. And uh, we will accept their kind offer of coming to join them as manager. And uh, after that, we're going to have a look at their game plan and their squad list. And immediately, I can tell you, this is not how we're going to be playing. Uh, I think Arneson is going to get a lot less game time when I come in as manager. He's not even the third best defender at the club. Uh, Pinnock and uh, Jean Vier, both better centre-backs. Um, I think it's going to be difficult for us really to uh, figure out exactly how we're going to play until we get into the club properly. But let's have a look at the squad list. And it is ordered in ability. So straight away, a name that is familiar with a lot of you who have been followers of this channel for some time. Aya, a big Norwegian centre-back, formerly of Celtic. Very good defender. Uh, decent uh, speed and acceleration for such a big man. But really, his forte is aerial defence, heading of 85, jumping of 83, and uh, he's quite a tall customer, if I remember correctly. 196 centimetres. There you go. Only 24 years old, and look at the defensive awareness. A very, very good player, and is definitely going to be a player that we build around at Brentford. Uh, also, Ivan Tony. I mean, you don't need me to tell you about Ivan Tony's ability, but we're going to have a look anyway. Not the best passer of the ball, which makes his uh, ability as an attacking midfielder somewhat questionable. But as a centre forward, the guy is absolutely electric. Brilliant speed and acceleration. Very, very good balance. Very good physical contact. Uh, his finishing is excellent and uh, pretty aggressive player. Not defensively inclined at all, but you wouldn't really need him to be. 179 centimetres. He's a slightly shorter player than uh, perhaps you would want uh, playing up front uh, but if you were to pair him up with a player like Mbuemo uh, for example who's also a bit of a short stack but very very quick you've got a very speedy centre forward partnership there could we bring in a big nasty centre forward to play alongside Ivan Tony to get the best out of him potentially but we could also play a front three with Mbuemo on the right and another player on the left, I do have fam a familiarity with Wissa. We have gone through this team before. So I think probably what's going to happen this episode is uh, I'm going to accept, which I already have the contract. Then we're going to uh, click on move to next season. And there we are. It is official. We have moved on to Brentford FC. And you can see there that joining us in the Football League next season will be Southampton, Fulham and West Brom with Norwich, Bournemouth and Brighton and Hove Albion gaining promotion to the Premier League. It's going to be a feisty season in 2022-2023. And uh, now the transfer window has opened. I will do most of the transfer dealings off camera. And you'll see those at the beginning of the next episode. But I think probably what we're going to do during this episode is just get the formalities of team meetings out of the way. Have a look at the squad. Try to figure out a formation that works well for the players that we have in the squad and identify any weak areas. So my boss is telling me that he wants me to get us promoted this season. That definitely sounds like something we should be aiming to do. So I'm going to say I'll get us promoted at any cost. I'm not going to promise the season of a lifetime. I'm not going to promise a, uh, a league title. But I can definitely promise that we'll give it a good effort. 
And as long as we can finish in the top six, I think that will be a good season for us. If we can mount a challenge for the uh, championship, then of course we will go for it. And as was pointed out in the comments, this Brentford side is potentially a better team already than the team that I got up with with Nottingham Forest in the previous, ser previous series that we made. So it'll be interesting to see if that bears any fruit. Of course, the best way of getting a tune out of any team is by playing to a formation that suits the players. And that's going to be something that we're going to have to hit the ground running doing. So let's meet the press now. They're going to ask me some awkward questions. What style of football are you going to play this season? Winning football. That's what I'm going to play. Winning football. Won't give me that option, of course. Uh, good, clean, sportsman-like football. Want to put on the show. I want the boys to play hard. Well, we don't normally concede too many fouls, so I'm going to say clean, sportsman-like football. I agree with that philosophy for the most part. You do want to see football that's played in the right spirit. You don't want time wasting. If you are going to waste time, I'd much rather it be through good possession play than by uh, kicking the ball long, knocking it out and generally running the clock down through naughty means. So there we go. That's all out of the way now. And we have uh, two icons at the top here that are highlighted, team management and manager office. Probably just a message saying welcome to the team. And of course, immediately, what we're going to want to know is what are our budgets for the coming season? Uh, we've got a message saying we have some newcomers in the youth team system. Uh, the schedule for July is pretty open, just the opening day of the transfer window. And this season's target is confirmed as being to get promotion. So let's go into team management and negotiations and have a look at the budget. And that is a healthy, healthy budget, at least transfer budget wise. It certainly is a healthy budget. Let's have a look at the youth team. Of course, it's a brand new team, a brand new club. And as such, we have a completely new youth team intake. Uh, so there's some names there that I recognize. The likes of Mikhail Silvestre and uh, Matthew Debushi. Scott Dan is in there as well, and uh, a fair numbers, a fair number there that I'm not particularly familiar with. So let's just scroll through. Dawson is on there. Interesting. Bannon, uh, Ibarra. Okay, Harry Arter. We know Harry Arter. Uh, we're not going to be getting him, though. He's a little bit too low. He's not going to have an immediate impact. But uh, certainly it's interesting to see that a brand new youth team uh, intake has uh, appeared. Now, let's have a look and see what the uh, what this update is. Haygarth must have been a... Uh, a... Is this a, a player that was on loan or maybe a player that was confirmed as joining before I came in? Whichever way it is, I don't think he's going to stick around long. Look at the numbers on him. He's 20 years old, but he's not going to develop, is he really? He's going to develop to mid-60s by the time he's 22. I really don't have much time for any player that is going to develop under 70. So that pretty much rules out everybody, including Bidstrup. And then everyone from Arneson up is someone that can be counted on as part of the plan. So let's have a look. That's Arneson there. So we've got... It's not looking good, is it? Okay, so, well, it's not looking good. That wasn't a pun that was intended at all. Already I can tell you that it looks as though good is surplus to requirements. So we're going to put him on the transfer list. This is the first thing that I always do at a new club is I look at players that I'm going to be able to use and players that I'm not going to be able to use. And I will immediately transfer list any player who doesn't look like they're going to be usable. Um, Bitstrup doesn't look terrible. He's 21 years old. By the time he's 23, he'll have hit 70. 
you know, I almost feel like giving Bidstrup the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, Zamburek. Mm, let's have a look. Passing's decent. Balance is okay. Maybe I'm being a bit hasty with some of these players. Just don't think he's going to be worth too much to us. Baptiste is done. He's toast. Transfer policy. We're going to pl place him on the list straight away. Alfonso Pastor. Well, we've got Fernandez to play in goal. And we've got David Raya. I don't see the point in having three goalkeepers at the club. So, Pastor, I'm afraid you're going to... Be... Why am I adding him to the listed players? Transfer policy. Place on transfer list. Gordon. Now, this is an interesting one, because if I remember correctly, he's actually uh, starting left back at the moment. Now, we have... No, he's not. Sorry. Henry must be the starting left back. I mean, Henry's definitely the left back that I would go with. First of all, his preferred position is left back. Second of all, he's rated 75 and will be for the next couple of seasons. Uh, do we have anyone else that can play left back? I don't know, but that's certainly a worry for another time, because at the moment, all we're doing is identifying players to get rid of. So let's get shot. Hang on, he has a team role effect. Youth prospect, don't worry about that. Uh, Presley, again, not really looking like a worthwhile investment in time. So we're going to put him on the transfer list. Hey, Garth, you're definitely leaving. I do apologise. Uh, Magoma, another one that just doesn't look like they're going to make the cut. Gilbert, again... Stevens, definitely not. And what this will do, twofold things really, it will free up some uh, very, very important space on the uh, the wage budget. And it will also give us a little bit more spending money, because think about it, 308, if we, let's say that we get just round figures here, 300,000, 150,000 is 450, uh, 860,000, uh, 1.1, 1.2 million, 1.65 million, 2 million, 2.3, 2.6. We're talking about somewhere in the region of 3.5 million pounds, just by getting rid of all of these players that are never going to play for us. So let's just assume that um, Bidstrup up, we're going to keep. Because you do need a couple of youth prospects. So we'll keep Bid, Bid, uh, Bidstrup. So from there, we can identify that we're, we're okay for centre-backs. They are going to improve most of them, although good isn't. But I think I did actually transfer this good. So Sorensen and uh, Arneson are both players that are going to develop in the next couple of years. Arneson is very, very young. He's definitely going to improve to a, a standard where we can use him. Uh, let's have a look. He's right-footed. Very strong. Not, expe not especially quick. Um, but his jumping and physical contact are great. His heading isn't um, 100 miles off. Speed actually will improve to the point where he'll be okay. He's very tall, 190 centimetres. I think if we were to play a very deep, compact formation where we invited crosses into the box, he would be a useful defender to have. So I'm not too worried about him. Also looks like he can play a range of uh, roles in midfield, which is pretty handy to have. Although his passing doesn't really look like it's something that would uh, lend itself to that. But as a defensive midfielder, just as someone to mop up and then pass it short to someone else that can uh, deal with it, he's not a terrible player to have. He also has the player skill for heading, long throw and fighting spirit. Hmm, okay. So we have a centre-back for the future there. Sorensen is uh, a player that will develop to a reasonable degree, but I don't think he's going to be one that we can hang our hats on particularly uh, Fosu Henry is a left winger who's at 69 at the moment and is going to not get any better. Uh, so 1.6 million he's worth. And I think, to be honest, the best place for him is on the transfer list. So let's move him off. Um, Roslev is a 69 rated right back, 23 years old, nearly 24. Not terrible. 
defensively, he's not great. Attacking wise, he's not great. Mm, I think if we can find a replacement for him, then we'll definitely go with them. But for now, I'll leave him off of the transfer list. Uh, Janelt is a German box to box midfielder who can also play left back. Again, defensively, not brilliant. Uh, he is more of a midfielder. His passing is average, I would say, for this league. A left footer, reasonably tall, got a good stamina, which is very vital for a box-to-box -box player. We'll keep him in the team for the moment and see what we can find in the transfer market. Maybe he'll move out after we've recruited a few. Uh, Pinnock. Now, this is a player who will probably play a few games for us. Again, good jumping. Heading is okay. He's a left footer, so he can play on the left side of uh, defensive pairing. And he's got heading, man marking, interception, captaincy. Very important captaincy. And fighting spirit. I like the cut of this lad's jib. Uh, good conditioning, good injury resistance. An experienced head who could probably sit on the bench and just come in when needed. Yeah, not too bad. I'm not too worried about uh, Pinnock at all. Um, Dervizoglu. Turkish, centre forward, right footed, good offensive awareness, good dribbling, good finishing, pretty bang average at everything else. He could probably be a, uh, let's have a look, what is, what's he worth? About 1.3 million. I think he's a contender for the chopping block, considering the number of centre forwards that we have that are better than him already. In fact, let's make brave choices here, everybody. Let's put him on the transfer list now. Uh, Norgard, I like Norgard, real life. He's a good player. Very tidy user of the ball. Passes well, and that's reflected in his stats. Good jumping, good stamina. Defensive midfielder, of course, which means that he wants to be defensively aware. He is not defensively aware, but he can play central midfield as well. So not necessarily a uh, a, a killer of a, a lack of stats in that area. Uh, force looks very solid for a centre forward. Sergi Canos, another solid looking player. I think anyone above this kind of Norgard area, you're talking about solid players throughout. Uh, Fernandez, very good goalkeeper. Pretty much amber in all goalkeeping categories, as you would expect. David Rea will be similar, maybe even green in one or two, you don't know. Uh, Godos is uh, a good all rounder. He's a goal poacher, Iranian. I didn't realise he was Iranian. Um, Interesting to play with him. I do prefer playing with goal poachers. I feel like they get into chances a lot more often than uh, than Fox in the Box do. Uh, Fox in the Box is a weird one. They just tend to aimlessly float around looking for the ball. Uh, Janssen. Now, this is where we get into our first choice centre-back partnership here. Because I think Janssen and Ayer are going to be perfect as a, uh, a, a central defensive partnership of two. I'm looking to play four at the back. Uh, David Rea, here he is again. No greens except for conditioning, but still a very good goalkeeper. Uh, Jay De Silva. Now, this is an interesting one. He is probably going to be our backup left back as well as a very solid option in midfield. Uh, passing wise, very good. Very good at tight possession as well, which is going to be important in those games where the midfield is going to be jammed up. Defensively, not brilliant, but at left back, we could play him as a flying left winger left wing back almost and uh, hope that he can pin back the opponents just by his attacking presence. So uh, we've got high hopes for De Silva. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Henry, of course, who, uh, again, like our left back position is not blessed with defensively brilliant players. But look at the speed on Henry. Speed 92, acceleration 94. Dear God Almighty, that is a good set of stats there. Unfortunately, the two things that he doesn't have are low passing and lofted passing. Does have acrobatic finishing. So he might be a left back who plays more centrally, almost an inverted wing back. Be interesting to see what happens with him. Uh, Wisser, I have experience with. He'll probably be the player that plays on the left-hand side of a front three. He can play left wing forward as well as left midfielder. He also has gamesmanship, which means he's going to win us a lot of free kicks. But a very, very tricky customer to play against. Very happy to be reunited with Wisser after I played with him on a private save for Lorient a couple of years ago. Mbwemo, we've already talked about him. Uh, we've already talked about Tony as well. 
Now, Jensen and uh, Onyeka are a couple of uh, midfielders I'm very interested in using. Onyeka more specifically because he feels like the natural fit for defensive midfielder. Defensive awareness of 77, the ball winning nearly there at 73, but his aggression is what really stands out to me. He's a player that's going to go in and he's going to try and win the ball. He will give away fouls, but I don't mind that as long as he's doing his bit for the team. Great stamina as well. He's going to go all day and all night, that lad, and 24 years old. He's going to be in the team for quite a while. Uh, Jensen, slightly more experienced campaigner. Not so well-rounded, but you would say as an attacking presence with a lofted pass of 82 and a low pass of 77, he looks pretty decent. Also, lots of lovely, lovely player skills there, including the through pass, the one-touch pass, and the no-look pass. You know I absolutely love a player that can play the one-touch pass and the no-look pass. Really, really happy to have him there. Ivan Tony. I mean, boom, look at the stats. I'm not even going to read them out. You know what it's all about. Ivan Tony, absolute beast. Uh, he's not bad in the air either. Jump of 87 for a short, shorter lad, under six foot. He needs that spring. So jumping of 87, heading of 77 and heading skill means that we can play with him as almost a target man, even though he plays uh, Fox in the Box. We'll start with him as Fox in the Box, but I might have to retrain him as a, uh, a goal poacher. I, with that kind of stat range there, with the speed and acceleration that he has and the offensive awareness that he has, it's a waste not to have him playing on the shoulder of the last man looking to get into attacking areas. And finally, oh, captain, my captain. There's no way that Aya isn't going to be my captain to start the season. If he has the stats to allow it, I will be training him in captaincy as soon as possible. Uh, but he's definitely a player that I'm interested in putting the captaincy on as soon as possible. 24 years old. And look at the defensive stats. Absolutely superb. So with that, let's go into the uh, the game plan and let's start playing around. And immediately it's defaulted it back to a 4-1-2-3. It knows what I like. In fact, it might have given us the formation that we were using with Dunkirk. Let's go into the uh, attacking and defensive frontline pressure, wide and aggressive. It has actually copied over the, the um, tactic. Superb. You love to see it. Okay then, well there's not much for me to do here other than to change players around. So let's start with that. David Rea in goal, absolutely no problem with that at all. Uh, Aya and Janssen as centre-backs. Now, this is interesting. Janssen does have the... Ca do you know what? Janssen, I think, is probably going to end up get, keeping the captaincy because he has the captaincy ability. Uh, maybe if I can train Aya in that role, then I will change it over. But for the time being, no reason why Janssen shouldn't be the captain of the side. Right back, we're going to make a change straight away. And that's because we uh, really don't want to be concentrating on using Roslev as a right back at a rating of 69. Don't really have a player that's better than him at right back, though, except for Ayer, that I I don't want to waste Ayer at right back. So immediately we've identified our first requirement. We need a new right back. We absolutely need a new right back. So we're going to look for a right back and potentially a youngster to come in that can play understudy. Maybe we'll look at the youth team because Ruzlev, 23 years old. I don't know if he's going to develop enough for us. So, yeah, that's definitely a requirement for us. Now, at uh, defensive midfield, Norgard is definitely a player that uh, we could consider there. But we already talked about the fact that Onyeka is better defensively. Defensive awareness of 77, much more aggressive. I think we play on Yaker there. Norgard probably out of the team. Uh, I'm thinking, thinking Jensen really. Need to move things around a little bit. Okay, our front three is set. I think I think the front three of Wissa and Buemo and Tony are pretty much set. Midfield is where we're having the issues at the moment. And I'm just wondering about... Uh, I mean, Fosu Henry is definitely not the option. Don't have anyone else that can play that attacking midfield role as well as Jensen. So 
Jensen is safe in that role. It's central midfield that we're looking for a player. And maybe Norgard is the option. He's a good rounded player. He's got some defensive nature about him, which means he's going to be able to contribute alongside on Yaker on in games where we need that extra little bit of tackling in the midfield. So it looks like Norgard is going to be the starter in that area. Uh, Fosu Henry is not going to be a player that gets much game time. Uh, De Silva. Oh, hang on a second. Didn't even see De Silva there. Right, Jay De Silva, you're in, son. Don't let me down. And we've got Force, who needs to be in the front of the queue. We'll change, we'll sort out the substitutes down the line. But at the moment, this is looking like the starting lineup for us. Uh, literally, because we don't have anyone better at right back apart from Aya, who I do not want to, to uh, sacrifice in that role. Could play Pinnock in the centre along with Janssen, I suppose. He is a left footer. And then that would allow Ayer to move on to the right-hand side. But it doesn't feel right to me. So this, unless things change with the transfer window, is going to be our starting eleven. Uh, we might as well change the uh, the substitutes bench while we're at it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe it's seven substitutes in the championship. So Force will be the centre forward. Uh, at centre back, I think we'll go with Pinnock since he looks like the best of the lot. Uh, we want a left back or a right back. We don't have any left backs or right backs, do we? That's a bit of a bugger. None of our centre backs can play left back as well. Maybe we'll have to stick with Gordon. Oh, Sorensen can play left back as well. If I highlight Henry, it will tell us how much Sorensen is at left back. 66. He's a better left back than Gordon. So, okay, so we're going to have Pinnock and Sorensen on the bench to start the season. Now, let's throw some midfielders into the mix. We've got Norgard. We've got Janelt. Um... Let's give Bidstrup a chance on the bench. And we want another centre forward, at least another centre forward. Oh, we have so many good attacking options, though. It feels like a waste not to include more of our attacking options. Sergi Canos definitely getting into the side. OK, Bidstrup is going to have to make way because Godos should be on the bench as well. So there we go. That's going to be our lineup. Godos can play centre forward, Force can play centre forward. They can play out wide as well, but Canos is much more likely to play in those roles. I'm pretty happy with that starting lineup, except for the right back. We're definitely gonna have to make changes at right back. Ideally I would probably like a left back with slightly better defensive ability. So that would be something. So we want a right back and a left back. And do we want Another, do we want a central midfielder that can really impose themselves? Like a good all-round central midfielder? Maybe we do. Or maybe we want an attacking midfielder that can do the job. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, to start with, this feels like a fairly decent lineup for us. Uh, they've got a cohesion factor of 86, which is pretty much where you want it to be at the very least to start a season. They're going to understand each other and the system fairly well. Most of the players look fairly comfortable. Yeah, this feels good. Okay, right. So the next episode will be a transfer special and the beginning of the championship season. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Up the bees. See you later. Bye-bye.